Center at the State College of Florida. For upcoming events, please visit our website at scf.edu slash meal and click events calendar or visit us on Facebook at SCF Neal. At this time, we ask that you silence all electronic devices, including cell phones, and please refrain from flash photography of this performance. In the unlikely event of an emergency, please take a moment to locate the exit nearest you. Thank you, and enjoy the show.
a secret? A secret which for state reasons it has been necessary to preserve for 20 years. Oh. When you were a prattling babe of six months old, you were married by proxy to no less a person than the infant son and heir of his majesty, the immeasurably wealthy king of Bartaria. Married to the infant son of the king of Bartaria? <laughs> was I consulted? <laughs> then it was most unpardonable liberty. Consider his extreme youth and forgive him. Shortly after the ceremony, that misguided monarch abandoned the creed of his forefathers and became a Wesleyan Methodist of the most bigoted and persecuting type. The Grand Inquisitor determined that the innovation should not be perpetuated in Baratalia, caused your smiling and unconscious husband to be stolen and hit away to Venice. We are here to ascertain the whereabouts of your husband and to hail you, our daughter, Her Majesty, the reigning queen of Barataria. Your Majesty. It is at such moments as these that one feels how necessary it is to travel with a full band. I, the queen of Barataria, but I have nothing to wear. We're practically penniless. That point has not escaped me. Mm. Though I am in strange circumstances at present, my social influence is something enormous. And the company to be called, the Duke of Plaza Limited, is in formation to work with. Am I to understand that his honored sire, as the Queen of Bartaria, I may be called upon to witness the process of liquidation? The speculation is not exempt from that drawback. If your father should stop, it will of course be necessary to <clears throat> wind him up. But it's so undignified, so degrading. A grandee of Spain turned into a public company? <laughs> Such a thing was never heard of. My child, the Duke of Plaza Toro is not fully fashioned. He leads them. He always leads everybody. Was he was in the army, he led his regiment. He occasionally led them into battle. He invariably led them out of it. <laughs> the enterprise of martial kind when there was any fighting. He led his regiment from behind. He found it less exciting. But when no way his regiment ran, his case was at the border. That celebrated, cultivated, underrated nobleman, the Duke of Plaza Torre. In the first and foremost flight, oh, he always found that right. Oh, that celebrated, cultivated, underrated nobleman, the Duke of Plaza Torre. When two we beat destruction's hand to hide, they all proceeded. No soldier in that gallant band did half as well as he did. He lay concealed through a war, and so preserved his glory. That's unaffected, undetected, well elected warrior, the Duke of Casalatore. In every dirty deep, a happy always to believe. That's unaffected, undetected, well connected warrior, the Duke of Casalatore. Be shot unless they left our service. Our hero hesitated, no, some marvelous is nervous. He sent his resignation in, the first of all his core. That very knowing, overflowing, easy going, hallowed in the Duke of Plaza Toro. To men of Brasserie, happy always shall go away.
spent And when at the end of the year I saw that it been cherished But a highly respectable gondolier Was lying a corpse on his humble beer I dropped a grand inquisitor's tear that gondolier had perished A taste for drink combined with gout And doubled him up forever Of that there is no matter of doubt No probable possible shadow of doubt No possible doubt whatever No possible doubt whatever But knowing I'm much disposed to fear For his terrible taste for timidly My highly respectable gondolier Could never declare with a mind sincere Which of the two was his offspring dear And which the royal strip which was which he could never make out despite his best endeavor Of that there is no matter of doubt, no probable possible shadow of doubt, no possible doubt whatever No possible doubt whatever The children followed his old career, the statement can't be carried But a highly respectable gondolier, for well, one of the two will soon be here But which of the two is not quite clear, is the royal prince you married? In and out and round about it you'll discover never A tale so free from every doubt A probable possible shadow of doubt A possible doubt whatever A tale so free from every doubt A probable possible shadow of doubt A possible doubt whatever Without any doubt of any kind, whatever. <laughs> but be reassured, the nurse to whom your husband was entrusted to is the mother of that musical young man who's such a past master of that delicately modulated instrument. <clears throat> she can, no doubt, establish the king's identity beyond all question. Heavens, and you know that, my good friend. Grand Inquisitor is always up to date. She is at present the wife of a highly respected and well-established brigand who carries out an extensive practice in the mountains around Cordoba. Accompanied by two of my emissaries, they will set sail to her address, and she will return with them. And she has any difficulty in making up her mind, the persuasive influence of the torture chamber will help joke her memory. <laughs> Unseemly wrangle. Such complications frequently occur. Life is one closely complicated tangle. Death is the only true unraveler.
what a delightful institution marriage is. Why have we wasted all this time? Why didn't we marry ten years ago? <laughs> because you couldn't find anybody nice enough. Because you were waiting for us. <laughs> I suppose that was the reason. We've been waiting for you without even knowing it. Oh. Hello. Good morning. If this gentleman is an undertaker, that's a bad omen. Ceremony of some sort going on? Ugh, he is an undertaker. Oh no, just an unimportant family gathering is all. Nothing in your line. Somebody's birthday, I suppose. Yes, mine. And mine. And mine. And mine. <laughs> Curious coincidence. And how old may you all be? It's a rude question. What about pregnancy? <laughs> <laughs> Remarkably fine children. But surely you are jesting. In other words, we've been married ten minutes since. Married? You don't mean to say you've been married. Oh yes, we are married. But, but both of you? All four of us. Bless my heart, you're extremely awkward. You don't mind, I suppose. Oh, you were thinking of either of us for yourself, I presume. Oh, Giuseppe, look at him, he was! He's heartbroken! No, no, I wasn't! I, I wasn't! Now, my man, we don't want anything in your life today. If your curiosity is satisfied, you can go. <laughs> you mustn't call me your man. It is a privilege. I don't think you know who I am. Well, not we indeed! We are Charlie Condeliers, son of Baptisto Palmieri, who led the last revolution. Republic is heart and soul. We hold all men to be equal. As we are poor oppression, we are poor kings. As we detest vain glory, we detest rank. We are Venetian gondoliers, your equals in everything except our calling, and in that at once your masters and your servants. Bless my heart, how unfortunate. One of you may be Baptisto's son. Anything I know is contrary. But one of you is no less a personage than that of the only son of the late King of Barataria. What? And I trust, I trust he was the one that slapped me on the shoulder and called me his man. What was a king? But which is it? What does it matter? As you are both Republicans who hold kings to detestation, of course you'll advocate immediately. Good morning. Oh, yes. to that, there are kings and kings. <laughs> but I mean to say when I say I detest kings, I mean to say that I detest bad kings. I see it is a delicate distinction. <laughs> quite so, quite so. I can conceive of a king, an ideal king. A king, for instance, who would abolish taxes and make everything cheap, except gondolas. Oh, and they give a great many free entertainments to the gondoliers. And light up fireworks on the Grand Canal and engage all the gondolas for the occasion. Oh, and scatter money on the Rialto amongst all the gondoliers. Oh, such a king would be a blessing to his people, and if I were a king, that's the sort of king I'd be. Oh, and so would I. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to find your objections are not insuperable. Oh, they're not insuperable. No, they're not insuperable. Besides, we are open to conviction. Yes, they are open to conviction. Oh, they've often been convicted. <laughs> Our views may have been hastily formed on insufficient ground. They may be crude, erroneous, ill-digested. I have a very poor opinion on the politician who is not open to conviction. Oh, he's a fine fellow. Oh, yes. That's the sort of politician for my money. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll consider it settled. Now, as the country is in a state of insurrection, you'll assume the reins of government immediately. And, until it is ascertained which of you is to be the king, I have arranged for you to reign jointly so that no question can arise as to the validity of any of your acts. As one individual? As 
one individual. Like this! <laughs> Something like that. And may we bring our friends with us and give them places about the court. Undoubtedly, that is always done. <laughs> I'm convinced! So am I! And the sooner we're off the better to start home and pack up with you! Stop! Stop! That'll not do. Ladies are not permitted. What? <laughs> not admitted. <laughs> not at present. <laughs> Afterwards, perhaps. We'll see. You don't mean to say you're going to separate us from our wives? Oh, this is very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be for a short amount of time. A few months. After all, how long is a few months? But we've only been married for half an hour! That settled that each 
Jukes, the aristocrat who cleans his boots, they all shall eat with me. The noble lord who rules the state, the noble lord who cleans the plates, the noble lord who scrubs the gate, they all shall eat with me. The lord high bishop who the docks, the lord high coachman on the box, the lord high vagabond in the stocks, they all shall eat with me. For every one of the and kinds of toes, they undertake to fight the genius.
Responsibilities. No, but you can recognize two independent appetites. It's all well and good to say we are to act as one person, but when you supply us with only one ration between us, <laughs> I should call that a legal fiction carried a little too far. <laughs> it's a rather nice point. I don't like to express an opinion offhand. Suppose we were served for, for arguments before the full court. Yes. So, so. Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> yes. But what are we to do in the meantime? We want our team. <laughs> I think we may make an interim order for double rations on their majesties entering into the usual undertaking to indemnify in the event of an adverse decision. Now I see that must be the case, but you must work hard. Stick to it. Nothing like hard work. Oh, certainly. We quite understand that a man who holds the magnificent position of king should do something to justify it. We, we are called your majesties. We are allowed to buy ourselves magnificent clothes. Our subjects frequently roar to us in the streets. The sentries always return our salutes. And we enjoy the inestimable privilege of heading the subscription list to all the principal charities. In return for these advantages, the least we can do is to make ourselves useful and not the palace! Duties 
of the day. First we polish off some batches of political dispatches and foreign politicians are compelled. Then if business isn't heavy, we may hold a royal levy or ratify some acts of parliament. Then we probably review the household troops with the usual shallow hopes and shallow hoops or receive a ceremonial at state and interesting Eastern potentate. After that, we generally go address our private cafe. It's a rather nervous duty, he's a touchy little man. Write some letters literary for our private secretary. You shake him his spelling, so we help him if we can. Then in view of cravings dinner, we go town and order dinner. Then we polish the regalia and the coronation plate. Spend an hour in city waiting, all our gentlemen in waiting, or we run up little errands for the ministers of state. Oh, philosophers may sing of the troubles of a king, yet the duties are delightful and the privilege is great. But the privilege and pleasure that we treasure beyond measure is to run up little errands for the ministers of state. Making merry on a bottom glass of sherry If we've nothing in particular to do We may make a proclamation Or receive a deputation And we possibly create a peer or two Then we help a fellow creature on his path Look, with the cutter or the pistol or the bar Then we dress and talk off in semi-state To a festival of function or of fame Then we go and send a sentry at the palace Marching hither, marching thither, up and down and to and fro, while the warrior of duty goes in search of beer and beauty, and it generally happens that he hasn't far to go. He relieves us if he's able, just in time to lay the table, then we dine and serve the coffee, and at half past twelve, or why? Oh, with a pleasure that's emphatic, we retire to our attic with the grass feeling that our duty has been done. Oh, philosophers may sing of the troubles of a king, but of pleasures there are many, and of worries there are none. And the culminating pleasure that we treasure beyond measure is the gratifying feeling that our duty has been done. Oh, philosophers may sing of the troubles of a king, but of pleasures there are many, and of worries there are none. But the culminating pleasure that we treasure beyond measure is the gratifying feeling that our duty has been done. Oh, uh, yeah. well, she knows. Now you can all go. Goodbye. 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 And we should just do it. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is a very pleasant existence. They're all so singularly kind and considerate. You don't find them wanting to do this or wanting to do that or saying, it's my turn now. No, they let us have all the fun and never seem to grudge. And makes one feel quite selfish, really. It almost seems like taking advantage of their good nature. Mm -hmm. How? Nice they were about the double rations. Oh, most considerate. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's only one thing wanting to make us thoroughly comfortable, and that is the dear little wives we left behind us three months ago. It is rather dull without female society. We can do without everything else, but... <laughs> We can't do without that. And if we, <laughs> and if we have that and perfection, oh, 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 we have everything. There's only one recipe for perfect happiness. <laughs> Oh, 
Not even most surprised Having passed the ruby corn Take a pair of rosy lips Take a figure trip We plan such as admiration wets We particular in this Take a tender little hand Fringe with dainty fingerlets Press it, press it If you can, take all these, you lucky man, take and keep them, if you can, if you can. Take a pretty little cot, quite a miniature affair, on a belt in trellis wine. Furnish it upon the spot, fill the treasures rich and rare, have endeavor to define. Live to love and love to live, your ripe in nature is, growing on the sunny side, fate has nothing more to give, you're a dainty man to please, Satisfied, not satisfied. Oh, take my counsel, happy man. Take and keep them if you can. If you can, take my counsel, happy man. Take and keep them if you can. If If you can, if you can, act upon it if you can.
It's not quite what I expected. Oh, well, I'm awfully sorry. So am I. You see, in every court there are distinctions that must be observed. Well, there are. Are there? <laughs> Why, of course. For instance, you wouldn't have a Lord High Chancellor playing leapfrog with his own cook. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> why not? Because a Lord High Chancellor is a personage of great dignity who should never, under any circumstance, be placed in a position of being told to talk in his company. Except by a nobleman of his own rank. A Lord High Archbishop may tell the Lord High Chancellor to talk in his company. But not a cook! Gentlemen, certainly not a cook. Not even a Lord High Cook? My good friend, that is not a rank that is recognized in the Lord Chamberlain's office. No, 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 it will not do. I'll give you an instance in which the experiment was tried. There lived a king, as I've been told, in the wonder-working days of old. For hearts were twice as good as gold, and twenty times as mellow. Contentment triumphed in his face, and in his heart he found a place for all the adding human race and every wretched fellow. When he had Rhenish wine to drink, it made him very sad to think that some had drunk it or a drink must be content with toddy, with toddy, toddy. He wished all men as rich as he, he was rich as rich could be. So to the top of every tree promoted everybody. Now that's the kind of king for me. He wished all men as rich as he is. So to the top of every tree promoted everybody. Court chancellors were cheap as spreads, and bishops in their shovel hats were plentiful as tabby cats and point of bad to many. Ambassadors propped up like a kind ministers and such as they who like asparagus in the tubes were free a penny. On every side field marshals, gleams of beer were Lord Lieutenant deep with banderols the ocean deep all round its wide opinions with admirals around his dominions and party leaders you might meet in twos and threes in every street maintaining with no little heat their various opinions Now that's a sight you couldn't beat to party leaders in each street maintaining with no little heat their various opinions As king, although no one denies his heart was of abnormal size Yet he'd have acted otherwise if he had been acuter. The end is easily foretold when every blessed thing you hold is made of silver or of gold. You long for silver pewter when you have nothing else to wear but cloth of gold or satin's rep or cloth of gold. You cease to care what goes the price of shoddy, of shoddy. This conclusion you'll agree when everyone is somebody. Then no one's anybody. Now that's as plain as plain can be. To this conclusion we agree when everyone is somebody. <laughs> then no one's anybody. to communicate. His Grace, the Duke of Plaza Toro. Her Grace, the Duchess. 
and their beautiful daughter, Casilda. <clears throat> I said their beautiful daughter, Casilda. We heard you. Have arrived in Baratoria and will be here at any moment. The Duke of Lazadoro and the Duchess are nothing to us. Mm -hmm. But their daughter, their beautiful daughter. What? You're a lucky dog, one of you. I think you're a very incomprehensible old gentleman. Not a bit. I'll explain. Many years ago when you, whichever you are, were a baby, you, whichever you are, were married to a little girl who has grown up to be the most beautiful lady in Spain, and that beautiful lady will be here to claim you, whichever you are, in half an hour, and I congratulate that one, whichever it is, with all my heart. Married with a baby? Because we were married three months ago! One of you! Only one! The other, whichever it is, is in unintentional bigness. <gasps> well, Whoa. Whoa. Eh? Who are these young people? Who are we? Oh. Why, their wives, of course. We've just arrived. Their wives? Oh, dear, this is very unfortunate. <laughs> dear, this complicates matters. And do you mean to say that one of these monarchs was already married? And that neither of us will be queen? That is the idea I intend to convey. <laughs> Poor, poor little woman. Oh, don't oh. tell us whose husband you are. And oh, pray, why don't you tell us all about it before they left for Venice? Because if I had, no earthly temptation would induce these two gentlemen to leave such extremely fascinating and utterly irresistible little ladies. Well, there's mm. something in that. <laughs> may I mention you may not be kept in suspense long. As the nurse who reigns the royal prince is at present in the torture chamber waiting for me to interview her. Poor old girl. Hadn't you better go and put her out of her suspense? Oh, no, 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 there's no hurry. I'll go interrogate her. And in the meantime, may I suggest the absolute propriety of you regarding yourselves as single young ladies? Good evening. Well, here's a pleasant state of things. Oh, delightful. One of us is married to two young ladies whom nobody knows which, and the other is married to one whom nobody can identify. And one of us is married to one of you, and the other is married to nobody. <laughs> which of you is married to which of us? And what's to become of the other? <laughs> it's quite simple. <laughs> Observe. Two husbands have managed to acquire <laughs> three wives. <laughs> three wives, two husbands? That's two third a husband to each wife. <laughs> oh, Mount Vesuvius. Here we are in arithmetic. <laughs> My good sir, one can't marry a vulgar fraction. You've no right to call me a vulgar fraction. Things are getting rather mixed. This situation is entangled. Let's Try to calm it out. You begin to claim you are the
<laughs> I don't know. It's incredible what unprepossessing people one can love if one gives one's minds to it. Mm, I loved your father. <laughs> I love. That remark was a little hard, I think. Rather cruel, perhaps. Somewhat uncalled for, I venture to believe. It was very difficult, my dear. But I told myself, that man is a duke, and I will love him. Several of my relations said I couldn't, but I did, desperately. <laughs> Enjoyment 
a false man of noble rank, congenial employment of our attempts we offer you, examples illustrate him. The work is light, and I may add, it is most remunerative. Small titles and orders for mayors and recorders I get, and they're highly delighted. They're highly delighted. MPs, Burnetted, Sham Colonels, Gazetted, and Second Rate Hall of Enlighty. Yes, all of Enlighted. Foundation stone laying, I find very paying. It adds a large sum to my making. Large sum to his makings. At charity dinners, the best of speech spinners, I get ten percent on the taking. One tenth of the takings. I present any lady whose conduct is shady or smacking of doubtful propriety. Doubtful propriety. If virtue would quash her, I take and might wash her and launch her in first rate society. First rate society. I recommend takers of clumsy dressmakers, their feet and their finishing touches. Their finishing touches. Awesome, in addition, they pay for permission to say that they make for the Duchess. They make for the Duchess. Those pressing prevailers, the ready-made tailors, put me as a great double barrel. A great double barrel. I allow them to do so, though Robinson Crusoe would jib at their wearing apparel. Such wearing apparel. I sit by selection upon the direction of several companies bubble. All companies bubble. As soon as they're floated, I'm freely bank noted. I'm pretty well paid for my trouble. He's paid for his trouble. At middle class party, I play at a party, and I'm by no means a beginner. She is not a beginner. <laughs> to one of my station, the remuneration five guineas a night and my dinner. And wine with her dinner. I write letters blatant of medicines patent and yours any other you mustn't Believe me, you mustn't And bow my complexion derives its perfection from somebody so which it doesn't It certainly doesn't We're ready as witness to anyone's fitness to fill any place or preferment A place or preferment we're often in waiting at junkets of fating and sometimes attend an interment. We enjoy an interment. In short, we kindle the spark of a swindle. No sin or tinting to your clutches, just him to your clutches. Or hoodwink a debtor, you cannot do better than trot out a duke. Wonder. What I'm about to say does not concern him. Sir, 
You will find in this young lady a combination of excellences. You would search for in vain in any young lady who had not the good fortune to be my daughter! <laughs> there is still some little doubt as to which of you is the gentleman I am addressing, and which is the gentleman who is allowing his attention to wander. But when that doubt is solved, I shall say, take her. And may she make you happier than her mother has made me. Oh, if possible! <laughs> and now, there is some manner I feel I am entitled to take exception to. I come here with Her Grace, the Duchess, and Her Majesty, my daughter. And what do I find? Do I find, for instance, an old guard to receive me? No. No. The town illuminated? No. No. Refreshments provided? No. No. A royal salute fired? No. No. Triumphal arches erected? No. No. The bell set ringing? No. No. Yes. One. The visitor's bell. And I'll ring it myself. It is not enough. It is not enough! Oh, well, upon my honor, I'm very sorry, but you see, I was brought up in a gondola, and, oh, my ideas are polite as I can find to taking off my cap to my passengers when they tip me. That is very well in its way, but it is not enough. I could take off anything else in reason. <laughs> What a royal salute to my daughter! It costs so little! Huh? I don't want a salute! <laughs> my dear sir, as soon as we know which of us is entitled to take that liberty, <laughs> she shall have as many salutes as she likes! <laughs> As for guards of honor and triumphal arches, you don't know our people. <laughs> they wouldn't stand it. They are very offhand with us. <laughs> very offhand indeed. Oh, but you mustn't allow that. You must keep them in a proper discipline. You want to impress your court with your importance. You want deportment, carriage. We've got a carriage. <laughs> Manor. Dignity. You want a good deal of, of this sort of thing, yes? <laughs> and a little of, of this sort of thing, and perhaps just a, a sort of this sort of thing, <laughs> and so on. It is very useful and most effective. It tends to me. You are king. I am a subject. Very good. I am a courtier, grave and serious, who is about to kiss your hand. Try to combine a pose in with a demeanor nobly planned. Let us combine a pose imperious with a demeanor nobly planned. That's if anything to one bending, to aggressively stiff and grand. Now to the other extreme you're tending. Don't be so deucedly condescending. Now to the Sufficient. 
thank you so much for enjoying this afternoon with us here at this amazing production. I hope you're smiling and laughing and leaving with a joy in your heart after this. It's been a fantastic thing. The reason I'm talking to you is that we would like to get a cast picture with the orchestra and all of our crew, and I bet some of you would like to get that photo too. Yes, if you'd like to do that, we're going to do that right now, then we'll all be out in the lobby to greet you. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful